So our second segment is going to uh, start right now. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be about uh, the big free agents on the market. Uh, not named Matt Chapman, and how does the Chapman signing affect them? And uh, yeah, just where I think they're going to go and uh, stuff like that. So of course we had starting off with the Boris Four, which was Cody Bellinger, Matt Chapman, Jordan Montgomery, and Blake Snell. Uh, now we have two left. Also one other big fringe who is not represented by Boris, who we'll uh, we'll talk about after. We'll talk about after the other two. Um, he's part of this segment. Um, but yeah, there's only two left. Um, I'm glad it's finally moving. I don't know when these guys are going to sign, but I'm here to give you my uh, opinions on it. So let's get straight into it. So first, we have to talk about, of course, the reigning NL Cy Young winner, Mr. Blake Snell. Um, I th- some f- uh, I still I think Snell is still in the market because he has a good amount of risk attached to him. Um, the first thing is, of course, the up and down seasons. Of course, when he is on his top, when at the top of the game, when he's on the top of the game. He's won two Cy Youngs, which is, of course, the highest honor a pitcher can get. But when he hasn't been, he's had pretty bad seasons. So it's very interesting with Snell. He's had two of the best seasons we've seen of a pitcher in the past few years. And then the other few have just, he hasn't really looked like an OB caliber pitcher. You know, when he's at the top of his game, he's striking out a ton of guys, um, being really dominant. But when he's not, he's, you know, not even going five innings. He's walking a lot of people, giving up a lot of runs. So there's a lot of risk contained with Blake Snell, which is why I think he's still out there on the market. Um, some teams I have as fits for him. First, we have the Giants. Then we have the Angels, the Yankees, and the Phillies. Uh, so first, for the Giants, um, there have been a lot of rumors connecting Snell to the Giants in the past few days. Um, you know, they need pitching. As I've said, they've had dealt with a lot of pitching injuries, so him going to the Giants would just be a pure baseball fit that makes a lot of sense. Um, second, his old manager from last year and the year before that, Bob Melvin, also uh, is in San Diego, was in San Diego with him, so he knows him very well. I'm sure they have a good relationship. Um, and they just need pitching, and I think getting a guy like Snell would really make that pitching staff so much better. If you can get Snell on you know, the... Um, the high points of where he can go as a pitcher. So I think the Giants make a lot of sense. Um, Susan Slusser, uh, who does cover the Giants, is one of the more reliable people who does cover them, said the uh, Chapman signing does not affect them with Snell and still thinks they're very interested. I think this makes sense. Um, I do think Snell um, is going to sign a long-term deal. I'll get with who I think it is going to be at the end. Um, And Chapman is kind of a short-term deal, so I don't really think Chapman signing uh chapman the chapman signing is going to affect them signing snell in the long term and i think snell to the giants just makes so much sense a pure baseball fit the only thing i would wonder is if he if bob melvin wanted him i think bob melvin would have gotten him already with where his contract situation is um with where snell's uh, contract situation is i saw someone i saw that on social media i don't know who said it but uh i agree with i do i definitely agree with that point um so it's kind of interesting to see where he goes with the Giants. There's been a lot of rumors connecting them. And, um, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, next, we, of course, have to talk about the Yankees. Um, the Yankees have been long rumored with Snell. Um, they need pitching, specifically uh, high rotation pitching. Um, you have Cole, but after Cole, you have a bunch of question marks. Carlos Rodon, Marcus Stroman, Nestor Cortez, Clark Schmidt, Clayton Beater, um, Luke Weaver. Will Warren, guys like that, who are, you know, some some of those guys are depth, some of those guys are slotting in. But getting a guy like Snell would get you an, a, a, a very feared ace tandem of Cole and Snell, the uh, Cy Young winners of this year, both of them in both leagues. Um, I don't know when the last time that happened is. I'll uh, check up on that. But, uh, yeah, I think it would make a lot of sense for him. Again, they need pitching. Um, the problem is they're just where they where they are at with the luxury tax situation after acquiring Soto, after signing Stroman, after signing Rodon last year. So I'm just not sure they can afford it, simply put, with where they are in the contract situation. I've mentioned this a few times now, but Ken Rosenthal said if they were to sign into a one-year $40 million deal, just for example, it would really be one-year $80 million. So I think that gives you an example of how it would affect the Yankees if they did sign Snell to a long-term deal. I just don't personally think it's going to happen, but crazier things have happened, and it does make a lot of baseball sense. So um, I don't think it's too out of the box to uh, think it could happen. Um, Next, we have the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, The Phillies, of course, need pitching. Um, They have Zach Wheeler, who they just recently extended, uh, which we'll be talking about next segment. They, of course, have Aaron Nola, who they also re-signed. But other than that, um, 
you know, you have a lot of question marks. You have Ranger Suarez, who's a good pitcher. But after that, you know, you have Taiwan Walker, who hasn't lived up to his contract yet. Christopher Sanchez is more of a depth guy. who's probably going to be forced into a five-starter role because of who they've lost. So I think Snow makes a lot of sense for the Phillies. I just don't think they're going to be willing to give him a long-term contract. We've heard a lot of rumors about them in short-term deals. But um, I don't know. Could that change now with Zach Wheeler being extended? Uh, will they have less money? Um were they looking at short-term deals because potentially they thought if they couldn't get something done with Wheeler, they could re-sign whatever guy they signed next year uh, to kind of replace him. I don't know how that's going to work now with Wheeler signing. I don't know if it should affect them that much, but I think it definitely is a factor. But um, So after listing these three teams, I haven't listed one notable team, and that, of course, is the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And that is where I do end up thinking. I do end up th- I. I think Blake Snow will go. Sorry, I don't know what happened there with those words, but I do end. Up, I end up thinking that Blake Snow will go to the to the Los Angeles Angels, and signing there on a long term contract, probably seven years, around two hundred million. I'm not really sure what the uh, AAV is going to be, but I'd probably say around seven years. Um, I've thought the Angels made the most sense for a long time now. Um, they obviously have money to spend, considering they they lost the best player in baseball uh, to their uh, to a team in their same city. Um, you know, you get Snell, you get another pitcher for that uh, young pitching staff. I mean, the Angels have always needed pitching. We know this. Um, I think Artie Moreno is willing to give out the big bucks for him. Um, I think it's just him waking up one day saying, I want Blake Snell. And I think when that does happen, they will end up getting him. Um, Blake Snell lives in uh, Southern California in the off season right now. So um, it makes a lot of sense for him to go there. Um, just with that uh, sense as well. Again, they always need pitching, so I do end up thinking he goes to the Angels on a long-term deal. Um, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes any of the other teams we mentioned. Maybe even a mystery team. I mentioned teams like the Orioles and the Philly and the uh, Mariners in past as well, which I think also makes sense. So it's going to be really fun to see where Snell goes and see where he ends up signing. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really interested, and uh, I'm really interested to see how the contract works because of the up and downs we've seen with Snell. And I'm kind of in the uh, camp of I would also not give him a long-term deal. But hopefully he can prove me wrong. Uh, next player we're going to be talking about is Jordan Montgomery, uh, the uh, the uh, second remaining part of the Boers 4. Uh, listing some of the teams from Montgomery, it's really the same as Snell. You have the Yankees, you have the Angels, you have the Phillies. Also have three other teams involved with them. First, you have the Rangers. I think you have to list the Rangers simply because they are the, the team he is going to be leaving. Um, we've heard that they want to bring him back for the longest time, but they just don't have the money. So I think if the money situation becomes more clear, they could bring him back. Uh, I think the Cubs make a lot of sense. Um, getting another starting pitcher in that rotation after signing, re-signing Cody Bellinger, uh, getting another big, uh, big addition to that team. And finally, I did list the Mets. Um, maybe this is wishful thinking, but I do think they make some sort of sense. It's been reported that they're uh, in contact with some of the big free agent starters left, not to offer a contract, just see how their contract falls. If Mon- Monty does fall to a contract where it is affordable, I could see the Mets jumping in, especially with the injuries they've had um, so far in camp with Max Kranich going down, the ace Code Hasenga going down. So uh, I think that could make sense. But uh, Mon- Mon- Monty's a really interesting situation because unlike Snell, there's not like one or two fits where you could definitely see him going or kind of think we're above the pack. I don't really think there are. So purely speculation, I would think he goes to the Phillies on a shorter term deal. I'm not sure how this would be affected with the Zach Wheeler extension, of course, which did happen this morning. I had a whole different segment planned for segment three, but I woke up, saw Zach Wheeler was extended, and uh, I put that in. So uh, we'll talk about that next, of course. But I do think he goes to the Phillies. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense for him. Um, you know, he lives in Boston right now in the off season. I also forgot to mention the Red Sox as part of the uh, fits for him. Um, I don't know how I forgot that, but yeah, of course they make sense for him. We've heard this for a while now. I'm sorry about that. I forgot them. I don't know why I did. But uh, I don't think he goes to the Red Sox just because of the money situation. I'm just not sure if they're going to be willing to uh, to dish out the money at this point. I think the Phillies will be. Um, I think they see the lack of depth in their rotation right now. Um, and I think getting Monty in a shorter-term deal, he returns to the East Coast, bringing him closer to his uh, wife in Boston. Um, goes to a team where he can immediately try to uh, win another World Series. Um, so I definitely think th- the Phillies are a big fit. I could see him going there. Creating a 1-2-3 of Wheeler, Montgomery, Nola would be just an incredible top three. 
Um, I think it makes a ton of sense. I'd probably have I think I haven't gone to the Phillies. I think it's the Phillies, Red Sox, or probably probably the Rangers. Um, if he, if Snell doesn't go to the Angels, I think that opens up a spot for him to go to the Angels. But I think he does. I think Snell does go to the Angels. So uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a big part of it. And uh, I think uh, Montgomery goes to the Phillies in the end. But I really am not entirely sure. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to a team no one's really expecting. So uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, with Monty and uh, where he ends up going. So yeah, um, I do think it's interesting that the remaining of the Boers four our pitchers. Um, I think we're seeing that as a trend in baseball nowadays where teams are very hesitant to give pitchers long-term contracts because of how much stress are on their arm nowadays, um, you know, how they're progressing, how they're regressing. Um, I think it's going to be a, uh, a trend for the future that long-term pitcher contracts can be hard to come by unless you're a big guy like, you know, uh, like a Zach Wheeler, like a Corbin Burns, like a Max Fried, who we'll be talking about in the next segment. Don't worry. So, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting both of the course four left art pitchers. And, again, I think it's going to be a, uh, a precedent set for the future of big pitcher contracts and them pitchers probably not getting them uh, to their liking. Uh, the last player we're going to talk about here is a DH, and that is going to be J.D. Martinez. Um, you know, there's been a lot of rumors about him. Um, Blue Jays have been mentioned a lot. Diamondbacks were as well. Um, Giants were, but apparently he did not want to go there, so he's not. Um, I really have three teams going right now. I have the Angels. I think the Angels could add a full-time DH after losing Otani, kind of a trade of uh, quote-unquote because uh, J.D. Martinez with the Dodgers last year, Otani, of course, with the Angels, so I think there could be a trade there, um, you know, uh, swapping uh, teams. But, uh, yeah, I also think the Mets make some sense. Uh, they've been mentioned here before, which is why I have them here. Um I think this price drops down to a, uh, a just really, really cheap for what his standards are and how good he is. I think the Mets could definitely jump in. But I also think they want to give their young guys like Beatty, like Vientos, like DJ Stewart um, a chance to uh, prove themselves. But if they don't really see much of them in spring training, you know, much of their uh, pedigree and potential, I think they could definitely look to get J.D. Martinez. But I think if they wanted Martinez, they would have signed him already. So I'm not, I don't think that's very likely. Uh, finally, the Rangers. I'm just mentioning them here because they do need a full-time DH. Um, an upgrade at that position definitely is uh, plausible. Um, they've been mentioned in the rumors in the past. I think if Martinez wants to win, no better place to win than the reigning world champions, of course. So uh, I think that makes some sense. Uh, but just looking where I think he lands, I really have zero clue. Like, I, I want to be frank. I don't want to just, you know, BS my answer. Um, I, I, I think a mystery team is going to step in here and... You know, sign them. If not, I think the Angels make a lot of sense still. I'm not sure if they would have the money to sign both Snell and Martinez, but I definitely think they end up with one. And I think I do think even if they do sign Snell, Martinez is still a very good fit for them. So I'm really not sure um, where Martinez could go, but I think the Angels and Mets and Rangers do make some sense. But I think a big mystery team could step in here. I heard the Angels being speculated on social media. That was just pure speculation from what I see. Sorry, the Tigers. Um, that was pure speculation. Um, they have a younger DH in Kerry Carpenter, so I don't think they would replace him with an older guy like J.D. Martinez. But, of course, he did used to play there, so maybe homecoming of sorts. Maybe they don't think Carpenter is ready. They could trade him for pitching. I don't really know. That's, again, more speculation, but I don't really have anywhere else for Martinez to go. Um, I think he's more of a clear fit just because all he does is hit, and if a team does want a hitter, I think they'll sign him. But uh, I do think he ends up getting signed before the season starts, but... Uh, I don't know where he could sign. I would say the Angels are the most likely right now, but even that's just kind of throwing, you know, throwing a dart dartboard hoping it sticks. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. But other than that, those are the uh, free agent predictions I have for the other guys. Um, you know, I think it's I think with Chapman signing a short term deal, I think it's definitely possible that Snell and Montgomery do sign short term deals. Like I said, I think Monty will. I don't think Snell will because I think the Angels are going to give in and give him a long term contract. But um, I think uh, both Chapman and Bellinger taking short-term deals is interesting. I think it could be a trend that both Montgomery and Snell abide in and um, both uh, both do. So I'm interested to see what happens there um, with both those guys. I've got, I told you my prediction, Snell to the Angels, Martinez maybe to the Angels, doing the team as well as possible. I really don't know for him. And Mons to the Phillies, but also the Red Sox could jump in as well. So, that, yeah, that is my second segment here. Um, 
We'll be going to a, uh, a break, but uh, before that, we'll be showing our third segment quickly, which is going to be about Zach Wheeler, him signing an extension with the Philadelphia Phillies. And, um, yeah, uh, just all about that, and uh, we'll go to that after break. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you after that. So uh, thanks, and uh, see you after. Bye.